there, I'm Elizabeth Hines from Our Paleo Family. Welcome to my kitchen. Tonight, um, this is a reader request. Someone had asked for tuna noodle casserole. So that's what I'm giving you, is a paleo version of tuna noodle casserole. And actually, I think I'm gonna add a little cheese. So um, it'll technically be primal, which is the same thing as paleo, but it includes dairy and in my knife. All right, so this is a request from Shannon Wagner, who um, responded to my Facebook um, request, I guess, to see if any of you had a recipe you wanted me to remake. And she says, like, anything with pasta, uh, mac and cheese, which I had done the um, Instant Pot spaghetti squash mac and cheese. So because she asked for mac and cheese, I'm assuming she's okay with dairy. So I'm going to put a little cheese in this for Shannon. Um, so Shannon, this is for you, but it just reminded me how much I love tuna noodle casserole, not as a kid, but actually, can you see what I'm doing? I have my skillet here, and I put about two tablespoons of avocado oil in there. You could use butter, um, you could use ghee, you could use coconut oil. I just used avocado oil because it was on the counter, so that was easy. And I have one organic... Vidalia onion, about medium size here. Um, so when I was in grad school, I did some house sitting, dog sitting, house cleaning, kind of anything to get me through financially um, for this one family. And um, it was a couple that their children had, you know, they were grown and married, and so they had this dog. So I would go and take care of their dog, Holly. And she would cook for me sometimes. And so this, I think the first time I ended up staying there, that was a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, she made me tuna, tuna casserole. And I remember being like, oh, thank you. Um, but I loved it. And I don't know what was different about it than what my mom made, other than it had bell peppers in it. And I mean, I didn't know I even really liked bell peppers. But it just totally changed I don't know. It made a huge difference. I loved it. So, um, tuna casserole is not something we have very much in my house or had pre-paleo. I would more like uh, make tuna patties, that sort of thing. Um, so, this is going to be my paleo version. Thank you, Shannon, for requesting it. It just reminded me of this. And um, so, you've probably noticed a theme to what I've been posting lately. There's been a lot of squash a lot of zucchini recipes because I have a lot of them in my garden right now. So I was just, I made zucchini bread, I made chocolate zucchini bread, I made the kielbasa lasagna with the zucchini noodles. And then I was experimenting with squash casserole. I used to love, you know, like a southern squash casserole full of cheese and cream and used to have Ritz crackers on top. So I made that, and I can't remember if my kids liked it or not. Of course, they were suspicious of it, but I do think they liked it. My husband and I loved it. We loved the flavor, and I was just thinking that that would actually be a really good starting point for the tuna casserole. So, you know, a tuna noodle casserole would have, you know, a couple cans of tuna, probably a can of cream of mushroom soup, which is why I'm putting mushrooms in mine, you know, other than for the nutritional aspect. This is an eight ounce package of cremini mushrooms. Actually, it's slightly less than eight ounces because there were two furry ones in there. Um, so then your noodles, usually it was egg noodles and maybe some cheese, crackers, like buttered cracker crumbs on top. Um, so we're gonna use squash for the noodles. And so I'm cooking, I'm getting my veggies going, my onion, my mushrooms, and my bell pepper. And then I'm going to add my squash. You could use spaghetti squash. It just happens to be June. And um, spaghetti squash, uh, I was going to say, we see them in the fall. I know here in North Carolina you can grow them now, but for some reason... We really only see them in the stores in the fall. So I couldn't get a spaghetti squash, but you can 
always get yellow squash or zucchini. So that's what we're going to use. And I'm just going to use half of this bell pepper because it's really big. So we'll save the other half. My kids would love to eat that. I have my oven on 375. I would love it if you have a recipe like Shannon. If you have something that you're kind of craving, let me know. It's so fun to try to recreate something. And I am always just thinking of it off the top of my head. So if you actually give me an idea, that helps me out. Makes me really happy. So, um, and I like to be helpful. And I'll be honest. So I have made the squash casserole, which is um, where I, my starting point for this recipe. But this video I had originally planned to be like an inside look at how I create a recipe because um, I thought you might think that was fun to see how I create a recipe. So I just kind of think through and hopefully this will help you. If you love to cook, if you love to get in the kitchen, you know, how can you take an old favorite that's not as healthy and make it something healthier? Um, first of all, I always start with a lot of vegetables. How can I get veggies in there? And of course, not only is this nutrition, but it's a lot of flavor. I mean, the onion, the peppers, the mushrooms, it smells really good. Or in my neck. Um, but then I think, okay, what was in that original? How am I going to make a paleo version of that? All right, so you can use a spiralizer and actually make noodles out of your squash. Um, and I have a couple of different ones I can show you, but it's really going to taste the same. So why not make your life easier and just cut them? Um, so we're going to let those guys cook a little bit. And the point of cooking the squash ahead of time is to get some of the water out so you don't have a watery casserole. So it was one yellow squash. I have this big zucchini. I want six cups of squash. I know that's a lot. But we want to make a lot of casserole. I have three cans of tuna. I can eat um, fish leftover because of the histamine. I can't eat a lot of proteins leftover, but I can eat fish. So I could actually have leftovers of this, which would make me super happy. I actually have leftovers of the squash casserole for breakfast today. So those are cooking right along. It's my two cup measuring cup. not to actually spiralize but just to slice these is when you run your squash through those um, spiralizer machines it makes this super it's like one big long noodle and so you're going to either have to cut that or you know everybody's having to cut it when they're eating it it's just easier to go ahead and slice it all right so i added a quarter of a teaspoon of salt before i'm going to add another quarter it'll help um, draw the moisture out of course we're seasoning Isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. It smells so good. I have my burner on uh, medium high. I just want it to cook. So we've had four cups of squash, which remember the squash are our noodle substitute. All right, so that's like five and a half cups, and I'm not going to cut another one. So I'm going to say five to six cups squash. Okay, it's one of those things that you could be really flexible. It doesn't have to be a real set amount. You could add extra tuna if you wanted. You could do this with like canned chicken. I'm not a big fan of canned chicken, but I know some people love it, so it's fine. You could use salmon, but salmon definitely has a different taste. This is tuna noodle casserole. So we just want this to cook, get some of that water out. I'm gonna grease my pan. This is one of those old um, Pampered Chef stoneware pans. And because it's old, it's pretty well seasoned, like cast iron. So it's fairly non-stick, but just to a little insurance policy, you could line with parchment paper, but Spread a little bit around. Again, you could use butter, some 
grass-fed butter would be delicious instead of the oil. Just add another extra layer of flavor. Okay, so while that is cooking, I'm gonna mix up the rest, like the, the creamy soupy part of our recipe. So we're gonna start with three large eggs. So the eggs, I was looking at a bunch of um, squash casserole recipes and some had eggs and some did not. And, and for, for me, for my purposes, I'm wanting to use eggs because, hold on. I want to use eggs because it, um, it's like a, a binder that will help with all of our liquids. So if you were using actual pasta noodles, which you could, if you eat pasta, you could use pasta, or um, you could do like a gluten-free pasta. But for, frankly, I love to use the vegetables. Obviously, I have plenty, um, and so they're wet. There's more moisture in them. Even though I'm cooking um, to get some of that moisture out, there's still more moisture than if you used a noodle that's made out of rice or wheat or something like that that would actually serve to absorb some moisture. My noodles are going to release moisture, so the eggs really help um, deal with that. Okay, so all these things are clean. I just got out stuff that I thought I would need. Half a cup of mayonnaise, so I've made my own mayonnaise. Please use a good quality mayonnaise because all it is is oil and eggs. So you want to make sure you're using good eggs and a good um, non-inflammatory oil. So it's a half a cup of mayonnaise. And then I also need a half a cup, I think a half a cup, yeah. A half a cup of coconut milk, so I used half of this the other day. And as always, this is my favorite um, native forest, the classic. The classic has a little bit of guar gum in it, which is fine. They have one called simple that doesn't have guar gum, but it's it's really different. The texture is different. Um, so because I used half of this, it's been in the fridge. So the cream part at the top is really solid, and I want about. I really kind of want it mixed in. I don't want all the water and I don't want all the cream. I want about half and half. So let me just sort of stir this around for a minute. Don't be real particular persnickety about it. Just you want some of the cream and some of the water. And what the... Um, so the coconut milk is, for me here, is a sour cream substitute. So like every good southern creamy casserole, you would start with a soup, a cream of something soup, and probably add sour cream. I just lost that um, seed in there. I'll have to fish that out. This was the seediest lemon. You know, some of them like don't have any seeds, and then others have a zillion, and this one has a whole bunch. So we want about a teaspoon of lemon juice because that's making our sour cream substitute. Just adds that tang. I use this in my beef stroganoff. If you haven't made the beef stroganoff, make that. It's really good. But this, um, I use that same technique. I keep stirring this around. Getting this moisture to cook out. Again, I've said this repeatedly. This tabletop burner is not as powerful as my regular stove, so it probably would take half the amount of time to do this on my stove. 10 to 15 minutes as opposed to 20 to 30. You don't really have to mix this in. I do want to catch that seed. There it is. So I have the three eggs, a half a cup of mayonnaise, half a cup of coconut milk, heavy coconut, um, full fat coconut milk, and the teaspoon of lemon juice. I'm going to add um, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt to this.
don't know what that was. And just a sprinkle more pepper. Um, I don't know what it is about squash, but squash really gets like spicy with pepper. I'm, I don't know what that is. So I really hold back on the pepper when I'm working with squash. I'm just gonna sort of mash that, um, that cream, that coconut cream. It will melt when I add in my hot vegetables. So that's like the custardy soupy part. I'm gonna add my tuna to this as well, and then we're gonna add some cheese. You can totally leave out the cheese. It is fine. Cheese, I think, is not really customary in a tuna casserole. But I have this grass-fed, this yummy grass-fed cheddar. That's from Aldi, actually, and it's really good. It's a really good price. It's like a carry gold. Um, and so I'm going to put a little bit of that in. That's a seven-ounce package, so I'll put about half of that. It's about three and a half ounces. Be about a half a cup shredded. And then, of course, we're going to have potato chips on top. So I'm going to crunch some potato chips, mix in some Parmesan, and that's going to be our topping. Okay, so I have three five-ounce cans of sustainably caught chunk light tuna. There's nothing in here but tuna and water. Is that right? No, this one has vegetable broth. This one, again, is from Aldi, so it's really affordable. I didn't drain that one very well. So just mix that up, break up your tuna as you whisk it in, mix in the cheese. I'm going to be done with my whisk at this point. I just can tell by looking at my zucchini, there's still a lot of, they're still very firm. So they need some more cooking, you need to cook some more of that water out. I'm going to taste my vegetables though and see how they're seasoned. The tuna will be a little bit salty. Okay, and then the last thing I have to make is the topping. So we want about a half a cup of potato chips because that's what goes on um, the tuna noodle casserole that I love. These are the Kettle Brand avocado oil. So. You don't have to be real particular. You just, gosh, there aren't very many in there. We'll just use the rest. So about a cup to start, and then they'll get crushed into no more than a half a cup. My daughter actually said, please don't put potato chips on it. I like, what? Clearly not a child with a Okay, so my topping is the potato chips, about a quarter of a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. So are you noticing I'm not measuring because it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to melt um, a tablespoon of butter and mix that in and that's going to go on top. So at this point all we're waiting for is the, veg the, or the vegetables to be ready. Those are really strong onions. Wow. I think just about five more minutes and they'll be ready. Okay, so can you see the squash are starting to become translucent? Which is what I want. I really want a decent amount of the moisture cooked out. The egg in there is going to um, make up for a lot, but I really... First of all, I want them cooked more than what they would be if I just baked this for 20 minutes. You can easily prep this ahead and just bake it the night of. Um, it's it's going to be 
It's going to be really good leftover, I'm sure. Um, everything like this typically is. Let me show you my spiralizers while we wait for those to cook. Okay, so here are two different spiralizer options. So this one is, I was looking for a, a brand on it. I don't see a brand. It's this thick and thin, which means cut like a fettuccine style noodle or cut like a skinny spaghetti noodle. And all you do with these is you take your squash and just by hand, and it's actually really fast and pretty easy. You couldn't do it with a great big zucchini like this. It just, it wouldn't fit in there, but a normal human-sized squash, it would work just fine. Um, and it's pretty easy to clean. You might need like a little, um, little brush, a little cleaning brush, but it's very easy. Hold it in your hand. So there's that one I got it at Bed Bath & Beyond and it was maybe $15. This is Paderno. I ordered this from Amazon and it is more, maybe $40. It has different blades. They store down here and then there's one here. And you can see the teeth on it. So you put the squash on and it kind of holds it in place. But um, even a regular sized one like this, I would cut in half because this is just long and it's going to kind of flop. And it, it's easier if you work with a shorter piece. And you just, well, it has feet, it has suction feet to stay down. You're supposed to hold on to this. I'm left handed. It's always kind of awkward. I feel like everything's made for right handed people. And it just pushes through and it comes out. And what you end up with is this core comes out of the middle. So you have all your spaghetti strands and then you have this like little core and a little stub piece. So you gotta chop that up. This one, more trouble than it's worth, unless you're like super into spiralizing and you wanna spiralize a whole bunch of stuff um, and maybe something harder like a sweet potato. Um, I've seen butternut squash, spaghetti. Um, you might like something like this. It's not terribly expensive, 30 or $40. But if you just want to do squash and do like regular summer squash, this kind of thing is great. Um, but my opinion is save your money and spend your, spend your gadget dollars on something else. Um, like a bench scraper if you don't have one or a microplane grater if you don't have that because the taste is the same and you're really not fooling anybody. I mean, you can put it on a plate with spaghetti sauce on top and it looks nice um, for a picture, but it doesn't taste like spaghetti. It's good, I really like it. We do squash for our pasta a lot, um, but there's no reason to go to the trouble to make it look like a noodle. That's my, that's my opinion. If you love it, that's totally fine. Lots of people do, obviously. Um, just look on the internet. Okay, so we've gotten a decent amount of the water out of here. I know I have raw eggs, I'm adding hot stuff. It's fine because it's just going to go straight in the oven. I want the eggs to cook. Um, it's going to be great. Just toss this together. Remember, I want that coconut cream in there to melt. There were some little blobs of that as I stir this together. I can smell the tuna now. It smells so good. Again, you can leave the cheese out altogether. You really don't need the cheese. Because I've used some good aged cheddar and Parmesan, it does have good flavor. Um, so I, I am adding flavor. I'm not just adding cheese for the sake of adding cheese or fat to be keto. This is, this is a keto um, recipe. No squash has carbs, but it's very low, lots of fiber, your net carbs, it's all fine. This would be, this would fit into a keto diet. Um, so you don't need to add the cheese to make it keto or anything. I just added the cheese for the flavor. And for Shannon, who was asking for macaroni and cheese, like, oh, she would probably like that flavor. Okay, so I just spread it out. It's so pretty with the, um, with the red peppers in there. Doreen. Is that her name? Doreen. Delane. Delane. If for some reason you happen to have found me and are watching this, thank you. You made an impact on my life in many ways, but with your tuna noodle casserole. Okay, so that's going to go in the oven for about 20 minutes, 20 to 25. It just has to get bubbly. It has to set. 
and a little bit brown on top. Okay, so our tuna noodle casserole has just come out of the oven. Remember, this is a primal version because I added a little bit of cheese. Take out that cheese, it's totally paleo because the creamy soup part is mayonnaise and coconut milk. And um, we use zucchini for, and yellow squash for our noodles. We had a red pepper in there, some mushrooms, some onion for flavor, and of course the tuna. And you can see how beautiful and golden brown it is. Um, with our little potato chip topping, just like tuna noodle casserole is supposed to have. It was in the oven at 375 for just about 25 minutes. You can see it's not watery, it's creamy, it smells so good. This would be a great dish to freeze. You could freeze it before you bake it and, and then have it ready to go. You could bake it and freeze it. You could make it in two square pans instead of the rectangular pan if you have a smaller family. Um, this would be great to take to somebody who um, maybe just had a baby or had surgery, can't have gluten, wants something different. You know, people love a lasagna or a baked ziti, but when they get 12 of them, they're really ready for something different. So this would be something different that you could bring to somebody. So paleo or primal tuna noodle casserole. Again, thank you, Shannon, for requesting something like this. Um, please send me requests. I love it. Um, let me know what you think of this recipe. And um, thanks for joining me in the kitchen today. Thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing, liking, sharing, forwarding, all that great stuff. It makes a big difference. Um, I really appreciate it. So we'll see you next time.